Hi, I'm Katie, and this is episode 36 of Ornamentations, which is going to be a spectacular holiday stitching celebration because I am fully feeling the spirit. My decorations are up, my tree is up. It was wonderful to take all of my ornaments out. It was like seeing old friends after a long time away, and oh, it's just, it's beautiful and sparkly and happy in here, and I'm so excited to share that with you today. I've also been doing lots of Christmas stitching. I have two new finishes, one a little smaller and one rather larger to share with you, as well as a new start, some haul, and then a parade of some of my favorite holiday finishes from the past year, which I hope will help you inspire your own seasonal stitching if you are also feeling the Christmas stitching. Or if you're not, you just enjoy seeing it because these are some fun finishes. And then I'll also be announcing the winners of the 4,000 subscriber giveaways at the end of the episode. But first, quick update on the holiday kits. I have fully cut out with pre-orders. Thank you for your patience if you were waiting. And I have listed just a few kits that are back in stock for Bells and Joy that are ready for immediate shipping within the United States. International shipping is on hold until January 1st just because the post service is overwhelmed. Big chance it's gonna get lost. And then a quick note on Bells. So due to unprecedented demand, one, item in the kit is very, very low in stock. I have been promised that it will be reordered. It should be in by March 2023. So I will continue taking pre-orders, but if we reach the point where stock is exhausted, I will note in prominently in the listing that it won't be shipping until that date. So if you want bells and you're willing to wait, fine. If not, please get your order in early because we are running against uh, running up against the stock that can be shipped in the near future. So this is Bells. It is beautiful. I love it. And then pre-orders on Bells and Joy will close off on January 6th, just in case you are busy this December with gifts, with holidays, and you're not going to be thinking about your own holiday stitching until a little later. So I'll close off pre-orders on January 6th, and then after that, the conversions will be retired and no details about them will be published in the future. Theodora, the original felt and sequin design from me, is also still in stock, shipping immediately, and I am going to insert a photo here of my own, her on my own tree. It was fabulous to hang her up and see her wings sparkling. I have also been thrilled to see some of your finishes popping up. If you are working Theodora or Bells or Joy, please tag me on Instagram at Stracken Embroidery or use the hashtag Katie Stracken Kit. TM the Curious Crafters on that one. I think they came up with that. I have also been asked if I will be sharing my tree this year. I'm gonna insert a few photos here and then I'll take a little video before the next episode and insert that as well. It's not really that different from last year in all honesty because so many of my finishes were pillows. They've ended up around the house rather than on the tree. But here's a quick little sneak peek at my own, which, oh, I love having the tree up. Honestly, I would probably leave it up until March if I didn't have a natural tree and at some point in January it becomes a fire hazard. <laughs> so I have to take it down and that's probably a good thing because otherwise, oh, I would just leave it up forever. But ornaments, tree, let's talk finishes. So last time I showed you my first stitch of Rudolph and Friends, which was as a pillow to pair with my stitch of joy and good cheer. But since this is a fabulous ornament size, I decided to stitch it again to hang on my own tree. And this is my finish. This is on Legacy Linen 38 Count Cloister Cream. I changed the colors up just a little bit, just for fun. And then also instead of working that second bird there on Rudolph, I put just a little branch in floating 
to fill that space and add a little extra pop of red. I pulled that off the Joy and Good Cheer chart. So here I've got a slightly brighter red and a more muted green. And then here the red's a little darker, it's bluer. And then I've got a brighter, more vivid green. I'll post first both conversions in the description. I'm calling this Rudolph 1 and then this is Rudolph 2. For the edging, I've used four millimeter crystal briolettes and they're sewn on at half inch in intervals and then anchored at the top of the seed bead. It's just a lovely bit of sparkle that I think is the perfect complement and it just ooh, adds something beautiful on a tree. So that's Rudolph and Friends one and two, but uh, while I'm speaking of joy, so that's why I stitched this first one as a pillow. But when I pulled out my decorations, I realized I had something even better. And this, I think the chart is called Jolly Happy Soul. It's by Brenda Jaray. And oh, they're perfect together. I absolutely love this. So this is gonna be my display for joy. It's not quite done yet because I've had an idea or something else to go with this. And I hope to be showing that on the next episode. Think sparkly berries and greenery. So that's gonna be really fun. I'm just full of ideas apparently. <laughs> but what I'm really excited to share with you today is my big finish. So we've been following my progress on Plum Street Samplers this joyous season with my own original silk conversion. And I was just really feeling it, so I powered through, and I have a finish to share with you today. This has already been blocked, and it's ready for finishing. I'll be stitching this up as a pillow with a sparkly edge. I'll show you my FFO next time. And this is this joyous season. I carried the trees all the way across the bottom instead of putting the two reindeer in. I thought that just made more sense, but you could also just do the two reindeer. And then I put a tree in instead of the flag because I just thought, you know, the trees made more design sense to me. It looks a little more cohesive, but oh, I think it's beautiful. I am so thrilled with how it turned out. I do want to note a couple little things about the conversion. So I filmed the last episode early because my mom had jury duty on my normal filming day. So between filming and it going live, I got to stitching on the snow and realized that the color I thought I was going to use was all wrong. I had to go back to the drawing board and all of that was noted in the episode description. I added an overlay title. So this is the color I actually used, 2541, which was correctly listed in the description. You bought the right thread, don't fake out if you are using the conversion. But there was another color under consideration and I have added that into the final conversion. That's Goblin's 4532. We'll talk about why that's in the conversion in just a second. So 2541 is brighter, it's whiter, and mm, I like it, but the snowflakes are ghosting. It really pulls your eye downwards. 4532 might have been the better solution. So I put it in the conversion so that you have it and you can play with it. If you don't want to follow my stitch exactly and you'd like to try something different on the snow. Where I have used it is to fill in the windows. Now if you're thinking, Katie, I already ordered the threads. I'm kind of annoyed at you. Don't worry, just use 2541 for the snow and then you can use anything taupey or gray for the windows. That's not terribly color specific. You can plug just about anything in there and it'll be just fine. You could even use 2541 if you want, but I wanted to give you that option if you would like to experiment with the snow. And then there is another potential solution here to the problem of the snow. And when I say the problem of the snow, I don't mean that the design is flawed. I mean, it just presents an interesting issue, how to make the snowflakes pop with this full coverage light color ground, which apparently was an issue even using the called for colors because a commenter who had already stitched this told me her solution in the comments for the last video, which was incredibly elegant and I wish I had written down her name because it was so smart. 
So what she did was she did not do full coverage crosses here for the block stitching snow at the bottom. She used a lower coverage stitch, which she called T-stitch. I had to actually look that up because I do know the stitch, but I knew it under another name. So it's a needlepoint stitch and I know it under the name Alternating Continental. Very popular needlepoint because it exposes a little bit of the canvas and it's a much lower coverage stitch. It can easily be adapted to cross stitch because they are just diagonals over one. You could also work them as diagonals over two. And the book here I've got is called The Needlepoint Book. I'll link it in the description. And this is a really great reference guide to all the different stitches that are used in needlepoint. You can't actually bring them into cross stitch because they're all meant to be worked on a grid. They're straights or diagonals and they can be counted. So if you're interested in bringing a little more into your cross stitch or, you know, doing a lower coverage option for the snow, which I think is brilliant, that would solve all of your problems. The ground would be less vivid. The snowflakes would pop out. It's a great solution. That's just genius. So kudos to the commenter who thought of that one. Honestly, I wish I had. Um, I was already pretty deep into the snow <laughs> when I read that, or I would have done it myself because it's pretty genius. However, despite all of that, I think that this is beautiful. I can't wait to have it with my own decorations. And, oh, I love it. And I think the slightly brighter colors that I used in this really make the design sing. So my own conversion has just a little more vivid, more saturated colors throughout the design. And I think that just makes it come alive. I'm so thrilled with it. So I hope you enjoyed seeing it. Uh, a few questions about the threads that have been coming up. So many of you are new to my channel and aren't familiar with Swag Goblins or Accentuate. Those can be everything in the conversion, which again is listed in the description below, can be ordered for you from a local needlework store. They're wholesaled by Access Commodities, but Needle in a Haystack, my own LNS and Alameda, stocks all of the relevant threads, although I don't know if they have all actual colors in stock at this moment, and they can order everything for you. So I'll link their website in the description, or you can give them a call if you're having trouble finding all the silks for this joyous season. I can't recommend the stitch enough. It's beautiful, it's really enjoyable, and I think this finish is absolutely stunning. So yes, if you'd like to go ahead and order the silks, give your LNS a call and have them order for you, or talk to Needle in a Haystack, they can take care of you. So one last look at this joyous season before we move on. So, oh, that was a big one. And I was breaking up the snow by doing some small stitches. Sorry, I've got stuff absolutely everywhere. As you can see, I did Rudolph and Friends. And then after my last episode aired, I received marching orders from everyone's favorite serial starter and I could not help but comply, of course. So I am reorganizing my threads. So of the three stitches I'm showing you today, there's a lot of color overlap, so I'm trying to keep everything in the right tray. Anyways, she told me to start Santa's night and I had to comply, so that was my next start in between working on the snow <laughs> this joyous season. And this is a prairie schooler shown by Laura, and I absolutely loved what she did with it. So she stitched it on 40 counts by Gart Platinum, but she also really toned down the colors, and that just completely changed the design. So I looked at her conversion when doing my own and this is my progress I've got sparkles on the snowflakes I've got a much more muted green a darker red and then I hope to finish this in the next couple of days I do have some ideas about how to fancy this up 
These are my threads, by the way, and I'll be listing the conversion in the description for this episode. But that block, uh, oh, and this is on 38 count legacy linen Himalayan fog. So that block of roof just looks, well, for one, it's, oh, it's really ghosting in here. You can see it better in real life, but the ground is very close. It's, well, it's very light, so it's close to white, so white doesn't show up hugely well in this. I want to make it pop a little more, and I want to make it a little more Katie. So, sequins. I'm going to use a trick from one of my felt ornaments. This was seen in one of my holiday episodes from last year. So if you haven't watched them, I do really recommend episodes 9 and 10, which showed a variety of my finishes from years past. Beaded, felt, some stitching, all kinds of fun stuff. And then I did also do a holiday decorating tour last year that showed my tree. So I used clear sequins and beads of different sizes to give a varied effect on the snow. And then I used the same trick, but with white sequins to do the snow on the tree. So once I finish all the stitching, I want to amp this up with some sequins. I want to give that roof some sparkle and some texture. I was telling a friend about this and she just laughed because Prairie Schooler is about as prim as you'll ever see me get. But apparently I just... I can't even do that, so she's nicknamed it Katie's Sparkle Prim. So tune in next episode to see what Katie's Sparkle Prim looks like in practice. It's going to be really fun. I can't wait to have this finished and on my tree. It's going to be buddies with Rudolph and friends, which I think also probably counts as Sparkle Prim. <laughs> Oh, um, Himalayan Fox is just beautiful to stitch on. I'm really enjoying this. So that's Santa's Night. And then my next start after that will be the Brenda Gervais chart. When Santa's Away, as stitched by my friend Carolyn, I'm going to be doing it on 45 count foxtail millet. I've started pulling the Swasser Fiends for it and oh can't wait to do that so i'm really feeling holiday stitching i should have lots of progress to show you next time and some new finishes however with that oh haul haul oh how could i forget haul oh my goodness what is wrong with me i also have to find where i put the haul so I showed you most of my new charts for holiday last time, including the Prairie Schooler Santa's Night. I had a couple other ones that I ordered after watching Laura and Brenda's, that's not their most recent episode, but the one before it when Laura was showing all her holiday charts. So she showed her start on this. This is an older Brenda Gervais called Merry and Bright. And I love that. Although I think I'd simplify it a little bit. I'd just do a plain ground and take out the house. But I like the way the branches frame the Santa. I love the little snowman. This I think would be really fun. So that's moved up the list. And then while I was at it, I decided to buy a Winter's Day visit. This I have seen and admired before. I didn't think I could get through all that block stitching. However, I just did this. So... I feel like I can do it. I'm not sure I'll get to a winter's day visit this year because I have so many other things I want to stitch, but I decided I'm going to be brave. This is a thing that I can do. So new charts. And then my other haul isn't stitching related, but it's holiday related. So I'm going to share it anyways. So <laughs> We have this joke that I'm turning into my mother. I really am turning into my mother. Many years ago, she went to Germany with my father for the Christmas markets there. Really cool. And she came back with a lot of for all kinds of German Christmas decorations, especially their holiday smokers. And that was when she discovered a maker called Kathy Wolfhart, and she's been collecting it ever since. And my brother and I actually used to teach her relentlessly about her collection of smokers. And then a few years, I started collecting them myself. This was my first one. This is Smokey the Christmas Pinecone. He's so silly and so fun. So these are called a smoker because they've got a hole. You pop these off. Put incense in the holder, 
light it up and then smoke comes puffing out the top which on Smokey the Christmas pine cone doesn't really relate to the pine cone but it does on my newest acquisition my mom already has this so we're really just twinning in so many ways not just in matching sweaters but matching decorations this is a Kathy Wolfart gingerbread house smoker it's so cute so if you put the incense in and light it up then the chimney smokes <laughs> isn't that hilarious so I have put this on a side table and insert a photo here with another Kathy Wolf heartbeat that was my Christmas present from my parents last year. It's one of the pyramids. You light the candles and then Santa and his reindeer spin around and around. I really, yeah, I'm turning it into my mom. However, there are worse fates. So that's my haul. I've mostly just been focused on doing lots and lots of stitching. But with that, let's get to Christmas finishes past. Okay, so I've pulled just a few of my favorite finishes from within the past year. So this is after last year's holiday season. If you want to see last year's holiday stitches and then some favorite stitches from years before, such as the great felt nutcracker tree behind me, watch last year's holiday episodes 9 and 10. Those are a lot of fun. But these are some of the, my favorite things that I've stitched since then, these are all original silk conversions and I'll be linking back to the original episode so you can find the conversions if you'd like to stitch them yourself. So, let's see where to start. Oh, okay, cheating, but a favorite is Bells as seen with Peppermint and Holly here. So I've been talking about how I can't wait to put bells on my own tree, but I had this hanging out with peppermint and holly and when push came to shove i just couldn't bring myself to separate them so i arranged them all in a little tray together i added some fake um would-be vintage mercury glass stars to add to the just like silvery winter theme this is peppermint and holly my way you saw my mom's alternate color finish on the last episode and then it's just such a natural friend to bells that I wanted to display them all together so I've got them here in my shaker tray and it sits on one of the shelves it's beautiful I love the contrast of the icy blues and the grays and the silveries it just feels like winter to me even though we don't really have winter here in northern California it's just started to rain so if you hear drops pounding yeah that's the rain and then oh, i didn't pull the charts for all of these some of them i did so another favorite is burr it's cold brenda gervais most of these are she is definitely my favorite when it comes to christmas designs and there's a little bit of sparkle here in the trees and the snowballs, but you can't really see it. It never quite shows up on camera, unfortunately, but this is fun. I've got this with a lot of my snowman finishes on the console in my living room. And then picking up a thread from the last episode, Christmas stitches on Russian tea cake. So I love, no, not Russian tea cake, sorry. Wild Honey, Legacy Linen, 37 count Wild Honey, which is a pale pink with a lot of gray in it. So bright colors really pop off it. This is Brenda Gervais Souvenirs of the Heart Home for Christmas. And then this is my ornament finish on Wild Honey. I think the reds just leap off it and then it's got just a little bit of sparkle. Fortunately, those beads are back stock and cannot be purchased but you could just sub a red seed bead to get a similar finish so fun i love this one it's gorgeous and then i also stitched artful offerings cranberry christmas if you've been watching me for a while you know that this is the piece i briefly turned into a drum and then backtracked on it's also what's displayed with my little gingerbread house smoker and 
this is just beautiful. It's restrained, it's delicate. I love what the background, well, the ground fabric adds to it. it just kind of brings the colors alive. And it's got these muted gray greens, vibrant reds. And then there is the accentuate and swasophene trick used here. So it's got just a little bit of delicate sparkle. Beautiful. And then backed with the same silk satin that's in the silk giveaway, also used here. Silk satin is just such a wonderful backing fabric. So these are two of my favorites that were stitched on 37 count wild honey because I think that just touch of pink really brings out the vibrant, vibrant reds of Christmas stitches. And then, oh, these were so fun. So I saw on Instagram last year that somebody had stitched peppermint pals and then used the same bright ground fabric for Merry Old Soul to do them as companion pieces, which I thought was brilliant. So I did peppermint pals on fox and rabbit 36 count. I can't remember if it's ocean breeze or ocean air. I'll link the original in the description. And then I've got him displayed with just some little peppermints from the felt pod. He sits on a side table. And then beautiful crystal trim. Take him out. Oh, and just look at how crisp those stitches are. That's the beauty of swag goblins. Love this little guy. But so that he would have a friend, I also did Mary Old Soul on the same fabric. But this one I did finish as a pillow ornament and he's hanging on my tree. So I've got them both on that lovely blue background. It is kind of ghosting in the light here, but it does really make the design come alive. So yeah, I didn't come up with that idea. I happily took advantage of it. And I think I just, I really love what the blue adds to Mary Old Soul. Again, these are all original silk conversions. I'll link them all in the descriptions to the original episodes where those conversions can be found. And then there's also modern folk embroideries underneath the Christmas tree. This is on 45 count foxtail millet and was my experiment to see how Swag Oblin stitched on 45 count. It does. I think it's a little packed. I like my stitches to have a little more room to breathe to sit neatly in the weave. So I would normally use Swasophene on 45 count. But as you can see here, you can definitely use Goblins on 45 count if you're so inclined. And then I've done the same Briolette trick that I did with Rudolph and Friends, but with this vibrant red, it's called Light Siam. It's shorter intervals and, oh, it's just this lovely, really detailed finish. So I've got this hanging right in front of a Chris, uh, light on my tree and it just makes it come alive. It's a beautiful design and, um, but yeah, I think the beaded edging really adds a lot to it. And it's a great size for an ornament. You always need some smaller things to fill holes. So that's modern folk embroidery underneath the Christmas tree. And then the last one I'm going to show you is Candy Cane Wishes by Brenda Trevay. This I stitched on the called for salt marsh green. And this is my finish. And the reason I love this so much is because of the edging. I want to try this again. This is the first time I've done it. So I just strung crystals of alternating sizes. That's a two millimeter and a three millimeter, three millimeter round on 30 gauge craft wire. A uh, commenter asked about this. You would always use craft wire rather than jewelry wire because it is less malleable. So that's perfect when you're doing an edging. So I just strung the beads on the wire and I stitched them down on the edge of the ornament. A little bigger, but still a great ornament size. It looks beautiful on my tree. The lighter green does really pop against the tree. And then that a little bit of sparkle at the edge, it's like a peppermint. Just again, comes alive in the light. Although I don't think, you just don't get the full effect here. So those are a few of my favorite finishes 
that I've stitched since last Christmas. Again, I do recommend watching last year's Christmas episodes to see some of my other things. The original angels that inspired Theodora. I've been Christmas crafting for a long time and have done a lot of fun things over the years. But let's talk giveaway winners. So the 4,000 subscriber giveaways were hugely popular. Thank you all for entering, for watching, for commenting, for being a subscriber, for liking my videos. Your support means the world to me and I'm just thrilled and honored. So winners. First giveaway, Sparkle, which was the crystals and then the metallic braid, which is wonderful for ornament fitch finishing. The winner is Jay Cadman. Second, and for all of these, I've commented on your comments. Please contact me with your mailing address and I'll get these out to you. Second giveaway, Green, which is the pack of green silk threads. The winner is Susan Fisher, and then they're already wrapped up, so I'm not going to show them. But the third giveaway, the pack of Legacy Linen, the winner is M. Arlene Ocean Breeze, and keyword silk, the pack of silk fabrics that I like to use for backing my finishes. The winner is Sue Fisher Wreaths. So congratulations all, please contact me and I will get your prizes in the mail to you. So for next time, we will have some more holiday stitching. I hope to really get some smalls done. I am oh, feeling Christmas stitching. I will be showing you my FFO of Joyous Season, which I think is gonna be great. Um, Oh, can't wait for that. And then we'll be seeing Katie's Sparkle Prim in full effect on my Finish of Santa's Night. I'm really excited to see how that turns out. And then we will have the return of my mom. So she'll be here as a special guest. We'll be discussing some of her favorite ornaments because she is the original Christmas elf. And then we'll do a tour of her tree because her tree is absolutely spectacular. It's what I myself aspire to and hope to one day achieve because oh, she's got maximum density. She's the master. So that's all for next time. I hope that you are having a wonderful December, that you're getting to spend plenty of time stitching, some time with family and friends, and that you are finding as much joy and comfort in your stitching as I am. I absolutely love this time of year. I get so into holiday stitching, as you can no doubt tell. I am enjoying myself hugely. And I hope that you are also really enjoying your stitching wherever you are. So I'll see you next time for lots more holiday fun. And until then, happy stitching.